The aim of this video is to reiterate the basic principles of penetrating keratoplasty in a difficult situation. Here we present a 25 year old male who came to us with a history of therapeutic penetrating keratoplasty done 2 months back for active pythium keratitis. The patient presented with a severely inflamed and necrotic graft as seen in the video and was planned for a repeat grafting owing to the threat to ocular integrity. Calipers were used to assess the previous graft size. Simultaneous graft preparation was deemed safe as there was no sign of active infection and no indication to cut past the old graft hose junction. A graft hose disparity of 0.5 mm was taken. The tissue was debulked to remove the necrotic part first, followed by a side port entry and injection of viscoelastic substance to push the iris lens diaphragm back. The necrotic graft was dissected freehand from the previous graft hose junction using universal scissors. An underlying thick fibrous membrane was present which was left in situ to create a partially open sky until the complete trimming of the hose ledge. This helps in gradual decompression of the globe. The membrane was then carefully dissected, peeling it off from its adhesions and excising it completely. A thin flimsy membrane covered the lens capsule. Any membrane present over the iris or in the pupillary area needs to be excised in a penetrating keratoplasty. Finding the plane of such a membrane is the key to tackling them, especially in a case with an underlying clear lens. Care has to be taken to avoid damaging the anterior lens capsule. This is done by holding the forceps parallel to the pupillary plane and gently grasping the membrane, lifting it above to stay clear of the anterior lens capsule and then excising it. After the host preparation, a disparity in the size of the host and graft becomes apparent. This happens because expecting the case to be similar to an optical keratoplasty, the graft cornea was prepared first based on the measurements of a highly inflamed graft that was edematous and necrotic. This led to a misinterpretation of the previous graft hose junction which remained covered with the necrotic tissue. The graft hose size disparity was addressed by first passing the three cardinal sutures to seal the open sky. The final cardinal suture was placed only after trimming the excess graft. The remaining suturing was completed following the principles of suturing in a penetrating keratoplasty. So as compared to the pre-operative necrotic graft, the patient on post-operative one month had a best corrected visual acuity of 6 9. So to conclude, a membrane or a retained desmase membrane may be left in C2 and excised in the end to achieve a partial open sky. All membranes in a keratoplasty should preferably be removed and a graft host asymmetry can be addressed after the first three cardinal sutures. The video demonstrates that even with unforeseen intraoperative difficulties during an open sky keratoplasty, the best results are achieved if properly handled. Thank you.